Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppers today, checking out more lager from Riegele. I am looking forward to it. So far, it's been a treat. We've done their Kommerzentrat, their Urhel, a revisit to hand pills, and also their two Weizens, their Hefeweizen and Leichteweizen. Uh, we're checking out two lagers, as I said, and we're checking out their Würziges Export, Dortmund Export, and then we're checking out their, their Echtes Dunkel. Dunkelana Lager. Lana? <laughs> Dunkelana. That sounds like a brewery. Uh, Dunkel Lager. So Munich Dunkel Lager. A style that uh, I've never been like the most massive fan of. I've enjoyed it when I've had it, but it's never been a style where I've been like Whoa, fired up. There's a few examples that I think are awesome, but usually with darker beers, I prefer them a bit stronger, mostly. Uh, and, you know, I love a good export. Ex Dortmund export pretty much often a stronger Hennis. So I'm thinking starting with the Munich Dunkel actually, just because it's lower in ABV and I have a feeling it might be sweeter. So, cause usually I would always start with a lighter beer, but in this case, I don't think we will. So this one is 4.9% and this is pretty cool because they say here it's a, a very special one because they use a rare, uh, Bavarian double toasted malt in this to make like a true rich Dunkel Lager and get that unique roast character. So Munich Dunkel is like a very old historic beer style and it's because of pale beer almost fell out of style. Uh, not a lot of people drank it, but a lot of brewers kept on with the tradition so you can still get Munich Dunkels. But a lot of them are also just like dyed beers from big breweries where people use um, uh, what's it called? Cinnabar for Weimann, for example, to dye their beers and maybe use a touch of Munich malt or something. Just but um, if you do it right, you'll get a more full malty beer. And you know, a lot of breweries do it right still, uh, like Riegler. So let's check this one out. It's been a long time since I've had a Munich Dunkel, but look at that. That is like reddish brown. It looks really nice, and it's crystal clear too. You can't see it on camera, but I can see my fingers through here. Uh, when I poured it out, it had a nice beige kind of head, very frothy too, but it dissipated because of taking pictures for the thumbnail. But let's check out the aroma. Really, 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 really classic Munich Dunkel. Really, really toffee forward, malty and rich. And sweet, like caramelly. Freshly toasty, bready nuances too. It's like a really rustic breadiness. Think like a pumpernickel type bread or something like that, but maybe a bit lighter. Some of those hazelnut loaves that Brett and I sometimes have talked about. Just like a slightly more robust, darker bread, like a brown bread or something like that. And then there's caramel, there's toasted nuts, there's toffee. It almost smells like a German equivalent to a brown ale in some sorts or some ways. And then super clean. There is a touch of a floral hop character to this one. It's not like a lot, but there's a little bit. It actually smells really good. It smells really enticing. Although it's usually not my favorite style, but I wanted to give as many different beers from Wiggly a taste. So we're gonna do that. So cheers, and let's check it out. That is a fire Munich Dunkel. <laughs> I really like that. I really, really, really like that. And I did not expect that. This is pretty much the inspiration. Like, so de in Denmark, we brew something called classic. And the inspiration historically comes from this. This is 10 times better. Like classic in Denmark is now, it's a weird thing. Some brewers try to do their, their own spin on it. And it's kind of like a Vienna lager or something like that. Or most, most of the time, it's a lager that's dyed with coloring, caramel color or something like that, or malt coloring agents. So it's just darker, but it's the same. Like Tubo Classic is the most prime example, but Tubo made a real Munich Dunkel and they still make it called Attentai Fies. This is way, way, way ahead of uh, that beer. For 4.9%, it's really full uh, in the mouth. Fluffy, but also quite dry, kind of like the other regular beers. Like they have a fairly, like initially the beer going into your mouth, they have a fluffy feel, but they, they finish much drier. 
I did some comparison to Munchenbacher, and I think theirs are much softer and pillowier uh, than these. I think Riegel does have some of that softness, but they have more of a raspy dryness, and that's perfectly fine with me. I love dry beer. The, the <laughs> Munchenbacher are also quite dry, but those are also crazy hype lager beers. Mmm. Ah, oh, this is really good. Really toasty, caramelly, uh, heavy, hefty breadiness. It has like a peppery, coita, uh, herby spice with the floral no uh, note was more in the nose, but the flavor is like more black pepper and spice and, and herbs with like, just like not a lot of hops, but just a touch. It's like, again, the balance is crazy good. And then it's just like big time malt beer, like so many full flavors. It's qu quite interesting. It almost also feels a little bit like the full strength version of a Danish Vidul. Because Danish Vidul is also like dark beer. Historically, I think it was originally ales, but they are somewhat similar to this. A lot of Danish historic brewing tradition is very much inspired by Germany um, because they're our neighbors and they're a brewing nation. That's a really wonderful Munich Dunkel. Like it's also not too sweet. Like it balances everything really well. It balances dryness, sweetness, caramel, malt, hops, everything. It's again, it's it's all about balance, just like conventional art, which is a good thing. <laughs> balance is also amazing. <laughs> balance is awesome. It's not always a beer that has to be in your face. And this is not in your face. Well, somewhat for what it is really. But let's jump over to the Würzeches Export. I love a good uh, Dortmund Export as well. Um, in Denmark, we call these Gulle, golden beers. They're often just sold as stronger beers. I think the most famous is uh, Tubo Elephant. Ah, it's stronger than this. Tubo Gul is one of them, because that's lighter, um, even though we also call that Gulle. But that's the nickname it has in Denmark. And we also, or maybe most famous is Royal Export, also known as Blokule. But those are all macro examples and going to be much more subpar than this. But 5.5%. Uh, harmonisch und witzig, it says. So harmonic, and I think it's piquant is the Danish translation for witzig. So that's so when something is piquant, it's like slightly spritzy, spicy esque. I guess that's how I translate it. But yeah, um, we'll be fun to try this one. It says powerful malt flavors, over 12 Play Doh, original words. So you have a full bodied beer, but it's also mild. And like all these things that you want from from this kind of beer. So let's ch uh, check out the Dortmunder. Nice streaming carbonation, very similar color to their other Helles beers, the Urhel and Commerzenrat. Uh, looks beautiful in the glass, streaming bubbles, white head. Let's check out the Würzisches Export. Yeah, it smells similar to something in between Kommerzenrat and Urhel. It's definitely not as hoppy as Urhel. Urhel is really hoppy compared to this. It's definitely more malty. So maybe I actually should have started with this one. <laughs> but um, it's a, a much different malt profile than this. It's like sweeter bready malt and lighter bready malt. It's also crackery and doughy. It has, so you don't, it smells, this is, Fairly fresh and vibrant too, but this has more of a fresh, vibrant lager kind of aroma. And I think it's also just because it's a, light, a lighter beer. Yeah, sweet cereal grain. And then like the slightest hint of hops. Also, I'm not sure the age on this one. They're bottled on, dates are all on their caps. So, and they're not here. But yeah, it's more of a sweet malt character. And the hops that are there, slightly grassy, but it's like, it's mainly like pale malts. Well, let's try it. Cheers. Hmm. Surprising uh, with the amount of aroma hops on the flavor there. Because <laughs> I was not really picking that up on the nose. But I think that is because of the amount in the glass. It falls, for sure, it for sure falls somewhere in between the Uahel and the the convention a lot. Um, I don't think it's as good as either of the two, but it's nice. It strikes a good balance. Once again, we're talking about balance between more sweet, full, 
Pilsner malt, and maybe there's a touch of Munich in here or something. There's a, a touch of like fuller malt flavor, but it strikes a good balance between the more full malt flavors and hops. Uh, and the hops, again, in this one, there are there is a floral middle fruit esque vibe as I found in some of the others, and also some spice. But it definitely seems like late hop additions. So it's definitely more aroma hopping going on in here than anything because it's not really bitter at all. It's also dry. It's it's the same deal with like the mouthfeel, like fluffy and also dry. But it's a nice export. I, I yeah, Commerzenrat, Urhel, and uh, Hanfields are for sure my favorites. Also really good, you know, well lagered export. Dortmund export a bit sweeter. I, I don't think it's as good. Like the, some of the very, very best Dortmund export is the Münchenbacher. But again, with these beers, even though they last a decent amount of time, is that freshness is key. That's how it is. And also a big thing with these guys, I failed to mention also they're unpasteurized, these beers, which is also not that common in Germany. But yeah, ratings. If I had to choose between these two, I would pick the Dunkel. It's super odd, but there's just some classic examples of these brown beers that I'm starting to dig. I don't know, am I growing up? Because <laughs> I usually I never really were a big fan of Munich Dunkels or brown ales for that matter. And now I'm starting to dig some of the really classic examples. This is really nice. Like a 91 for the Echtes Dunkel, maybe even a 92. It's a really nice Dunkel Lager. Münchner Dunkel Lager, yeah. And for the export, I think a straight 90. I got much more hop character now having a sip of this. Like grassy and floral. Soft spiciness or woodiness. Definitely has like some woodiness to it as well. But yeah, I think straight 90. I think it's nice. I'm not just as fired up as the other um, pale lager beers, but they're, it's still really, really nice. I think. Legal is a really nice brewery making awesome classic beer and I can't wait to try some more. So if you guys had either the uh, Riegel Echtes Dunkel or the Riegel Würziges Export, let me know what you thought of them. We're diving through some more. We got five different beers left from these guys and the last, some of the last ones are tiny bottles of their old school beer, which is like Doppelbock and Pale Doppelbock. And there's also the, uh, what's it called? Weizenbock. But <laughs> almost held it in through the entire review but carbonated beer <laughs> but nice stuff if you guys had these let me know as always remember to comment subscribe check out the facebook fan page and twitter and instagram give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it ring the bell for future notifications about videos and i will say cheers and see you guys in another beer review